Hello and welcome to another episode of Celebrating Southbridge. I'm Ron Sanangelo, Southbridge Town Manager, and this show is all about you. It introduces you to local events that are happening, to what's happening within town government, and kind of gives you an introduction to the daily uh, businesses the town has. Today it's another great day and I have a great guest with me who is really going to tell us a little bit about veterans issues. And specifically we're going to talk a lot about the Memorial Day Parade. The person that I'm having as a guest today is Mike Trombley. He's our veteran agent and our community services director. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. You know, it's great to have you, and we work together a lot on different issues, but uh, obviously the big issues I want to talk to you about today is Memorial Day that's coming up, the 28th. Mm -hmm. I want to start off talking a little bit about that. I know that you've been a dedicated, I know you're a veteran yourself, mm -hmm. and dedicated to the veterans community, but tell me a little bit about, about Memorial Day and why it's so important to you and all the things that are starting to come up as part of your plan to have a wonderful day that day. Uh, Memorial Day is, is important, not, not just to me, uh, but you know, Southbridge has had a history of, of many, many combat veterans. Um, we've lost veterans um, just, in the, just in the Vietnam era. We had uh, six individuals that were killed in action, just to give an example. But it, it's been a veterans community for many, many years. I've, I've been involved uh, since um, I returned home uh, in 1969, and uh, haven't stopped since. I became a member of the Veterans Council, uh, which at the time was nine veterans organizations that were assembled to create a committee uh, to oversee things such as Memorial Day, Veterans Day, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to get monuments placed in the town. Uh, and unfortunately, through the years, because of age, obviously, uh, most of our World War II veterans have passed on now. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's left to the younger uh, generation that just is not much interested as the older generation mm -hmm. was. So we do the best that we can, and we're down to four organizations now, the Veterans Council, mm -hmm. and we have been sponsoring the Veterans, um, Veterans Day activities as well as Memorial Day activities uh, since the, the end of World War II. So, Mike, I know you were in the service, and why don't you tell us what branch you were in? And first, uh, first of all, thank Army. you for your service. But, thank you. But tell me, the United States Army. United States and, Army. And did you turn during wartime, or what yes, was your I time? Yes, I did. I, uh, I joined the service in 1965. Um, I went to Vietnam in uh, 1967 mm -hmm. and, and returned in uh, July of 1968. I'm a disabled veteran um, and uh, very proud of it, and I was discharged in November of 1968. Okay, let's go. I'm going to get more into specific about Memorial Day because that's coming up and people need to be aware. But I also want to talk a little bit about veteran services at the end of this and talk about, because you are the veteran agent in town and you provide services for veterans throughout whatever uh, service period that they, they uh, enjoyed. But let's talk specifically about Memorial Day. The 28th is coming up. Yep. Um, I know, you know everybody focuses on the 28th because that's the day we have the parade and stuff. But Correct. there's sort of a lot of things that happen leading up to the 28th. So let's start from the beginning. What's right. the first event that kind of starts setting the tone for Memorial Day? The first event, obviously, has been a, a few previous meetings held by the Veterans Council, but the first actual event will begin this coming Sunday uh, when Veterans Council members, as well as uh, veterans, will meet at uh, St. Paul John the Baptist Church, formerly Notre Dame Church, uh, for a 10 a.m. Mass. Uh, that's called the Memorial Mass. Uh, we've been doing that for several, several years. And that completes Sunday. It's a one-hour mass. Uh, we get together with coffee and donuts after, and that is it. All, uh, veter all veterans are welcome to come All to veterans are welcome to attend. Okay. That is uh, Sunday. Now, next week on Friday, Friday, uh, the Veterans Council members, along with volunteers, will meet at New Notre Dame Cemetery on Northwood Stock Road, where we begin uh, placing uh, U.S. flags mm -hmm. on the graves of our, uh, our brethren that are, uh, have gone before us. Um, that is gen generally done by the Knights of Columbus, mm -hmm. as well as volunteers. Thursday, we have an individual that would do one of our other uh, cemeteries, which is called St. George Cemetery on Clements Hill Road. Mm -hmm. That is accomplished by... Uh, one single individual, he enjoys doing it by himself. He's going to place over 300 flags in that wow. cemetery on Thursday night. 
on Saturday morning, we will have volunteers and two organizations <coughs> placing flags. The Southbridge Rotary Club will be doing St. Mary Cemetery on Charlton Street, mm -hmm. which has approximately 600 flags. And on Saturday at 9 a.m., volunteers, as well as any organizations that want to join us, we have Boy Scouts, we have Girl Scouts, we have a whole bunch of people that show up on Saturday. We do the town-owned cemetery, which is Oak Ridge Cemetery. In total, by Saturday, by noontime, we will have placed 2,325 wow. flags. And how long do the flags actually stay there? Uh, we're allowed to leave them out until the following Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, some towns allow them out year-round. In our, in our particular town, it, uh, it, it kind of gets in the way of the, uh, you know, the grass-cutting uh, areas, mm -hmm. and uh, they respectfully ask us to take them out of the cemetery by Wednesday. Now, are those on just the headstones of veterans? Or? Those are only placed where there is a foot marker where a veteran is buried. The mm -hmm. United States government provides every uh, honorably served veteran with a what's called a footstone, mm -hmm. and uh, that footstone is put at the foot of the grave, and uh, as we identify the footstone, we place an American flag. And the purpose of the flag being there on the cemetery is to remember their service to their country. Is that the concept of the Absolutely. flag being there? Absolutely, and to honor their service. To honor their service to the country. At, That's it, actually, it's a Massachusetts state law. Okay, so so in terms of the parade, right? So now we get up to the 28th. What time does the parade start? Parade will gather and meet. Our first ceremony will be right outside of this building mm -hmm. in front of the Southbridge Town Hall for the, G, uh, okay. the GA Armory. And what time is that? 10? 8.30 a.m. 8.30 a.m. So anybody who wants to be there, that's when they should start lining up prior to 8.30 because the parade is going to, effectively, we're going to meet at 8.30 and we take off about what? Yeah, we, got, we, we, leave? We, we turn right after this ceremony mm -hmm. is completed. We go down to the corner of Elm Street. We reline the parade and we leave the, the corner of Elm Street at 9 a.m. shop. 9 a.m. So, you know what? I've been in that parade a number of years yep. now marching with you. Tell me about, first of all, let's let's get to the kind of basic of running the parade. Now we'll get into the meaning of the parade. But I know the Veterans Council is involved in running this parade, and I think they fund it. So tell me uh, the veterans organization role in the parade and how much money they fund it and sort of the basic organizational stuff, and we'll get more into the meaning of the parade later. Uh, as far as cost goes, there's, there's not a great deal of cost for Memorial Day. I mean, um, you know, repairs to our wreaths. We have about uh, 38 wreaths. Those wreaths re require, they're not, uh, they're imitation flowers, but each year they have to be, you know, put back into place because the wind blows them around or whatever. There's a cost associated with that. Um, we do make donations. The Veterans Council makes donations. High school band, Southbridge High School Marching Band. Every year, like clockwork, the kids are out there, uh, and they play like they're playing in Carnegie Hall. Um, we make a donation to them. Mm -hmm. We make a donation to the church. Um, y there are some costs involved. As far as the groups that, that provide um, the, the parade itself, uh, the Southbridge Police Department, they are the Southbridge Veterans Council Honor Guard. We bought their regalia, and they offered to be our color guard, and they've been our color guard for many, many years. Southridge Fire Department, uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, several town councils, yourself, mm -hmm. you've involved yourself. Um, so it's, um, it's a good day. It's a good day for us to do what we should be doing. It's a day of a memory, and that's exactly what Memorial stands for. You, you, you memorize those people that have either uh, lost their lives in military service or those that have gone before us. So, Mike, just in case anyone there out wants to know, is there a place if somebody wanted to donate some money to the Veterans Council, how would they go about doing that? If they wanted the help with the parade or just donations for the bands or whatever it is, if, they, if you want to contribute, how could they contribute to the Veterans Council? They can contact me um, through my office, the Department of Veterans Services, Town of Southbridge, and I will make sure that that donation gets in the hands of the Veterans Council, which is not a town department. Right. Um, Veterans Council is totally separate from mm -hmm. the town of Southbridge. Obviously, the town of Southbridge does everything it can to support veterans, so we have no problem with you collecting some money and giving it to the Veterans Council. Yeah. Um, we appreciate that. Obviously, the veterans agent is there to help veterans across the board. Correct. Anything we can do to help in that cause, we're, we're more than willing to. So, okay, the parade, we know it starts at 9 o'clock. And it starts in the corner of Elm, Elm. and on uh, Main Street. Then we travel then it, over to Hamilton Street to yeah. the Hiker Monument. 
You know, that's one of the things that I was impressed with, and I had never realized just how many beautiful monuments Southbridge has has it relates to different uh, military events or times mm -hmm. in, the, in our country. Tell me about the the statues and stuff that we stop at, because I, I, I tell you, I found that they're absolutely beautiful, and that Southbridge has a wonderful history of honoring people who have served our great country throughout all the various different wars. So let's talk about the some of the statues that you will see if you're marching in the parade and, and why it's important those statues are there. Those statues, believe it or not, yeah. um, uh, I, I don't have the data in front of me to tell me the exact years that they were manufactured and installed. But I, I can tell you this, in 1995, uh, the town manager, Florence Chandler, at that point in time, our statues were all in horrendous condition. Uh, they had been up for years. They hadn't really been taken care of. They weren't blasted. Um, they turned greenish colors and whatever. And Florence Chandler had, had asked me to look into uh, getting some quotes and bids for updating these monuments. Mm -hmm. And she, she found a way to get me $45,000 to have these monuments mm -hmm. all brought up to date. Uh, and they have stayed in the condition they have since 1995. Mm -hmm. uh, the only one that we've got a little problem with is our South Bridge Honor Roll Monument, which is the newest monument that was put in on, on Main mm -hmm. Street. Um, and that the m money raised for that monument was done by the VFW itself as a private organization dedicated to the town some 10 years ago. Problem is the patina, which is the goldish color behind the letters, seems to be fading away. And that'll have to be addressed, you know, someday soon. But the monuments uh, in, in overall are in pretty great shape yeah. in this community. Mike, the, the, a lot of people, I think, confuse Memorial Day and Veterans Day. I know they, they realize it's time to honor our military, but let's kind of specific, because I think they, they both have you know, very specific differences and importances within what we're trying to do there. So tell me a little bit about the importance itself of Memorial Day and why we recognize that particular day. Well, Memorial Day, obviously, as I said earlier, um, you know, it's a time to reflect and it's a time to remember that those uh, either were killed in action or those have gone before us. The difference between Memorial Day and Veterans Day is Veterans Day, uh, we actually celebrate. It's, it's more of a celebration for the veterans that we, we have today that are still serving their country or have served their country. Mm -hmm. uh, so that becomes sort of a difference. Right. Uh, you know, those that wore the uniform and, and the pride and everything, that's what Veterans Day is all about. So, so many people throughout Southbridge and through our country have lost family members as a result of war. Those people that are gone and, you know, husbands or wives who lost their husbands. Correct. And, and vice versa, women who've died and, and husbands that are still alive and stuff. It, it, it's a difficult day in terms of you miss your loved one. But it's also a wonderful day and it gives you a chance as a loved one of, of that veteran to reflect on the great achievement they had and the things they did to make our country what it is, right? So, so it's really important to, to remember uh, them, that, they, that they're never, ever forgotten because without them, we wouldn't be who we are, right? Absolutely. You know? That's uh, what gives us our freedom. Yep. Absolutely. So the parade itself, tell me about, we talked a little bit, we know that the police and fire departments are involved in the parade. We know the high school band's in the parade. Uh, I've seen little leaguers and things like that in yep. the parade. Tell me about who's in the parade and about how long it, it's going to take. And to me, they always... The difficult part is the ending in the cemetery. It's the it cemetery is. part. It was always my hard part. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, as, as you just mentioned, uh, those are the organizations that will partake in the parade. Everyone, everyone in the community or those that are coming in from other communities <clears throat> are welcome to join us in the parade, obviously. Um, just so that the public is aware, it's once again, it's, it's, it's a day to remember. We don't bring out the ambulances and the fire trucks and the sirens and all that. That's not the type of parade that we have. Uh, it's very mm. solemn from the moment we start at 8.30 a.m. And by the time we're completed at approximately 11.30 a.m., it's very solemn at every location that we visit because that's what the meaning is. That's what they're there for. And um, after 11.30, well, if people wish to celebrate, that's a different story. Mm. But... While we're doing the Memorial Day observances, that's exactly what it is. It's observances. Yeah. Yeah, I find it wonderful. Tell me a little bit about, 
and, and I am correct, we, we end up in a cemetery. Tell me a little bit about that. So we end up in the cemetery here? No, we end up at the VFW oh, Hall that's right, on the VFW 605 uh, Everett Street. And after after the parade, you do a little something, too, for veterans after the parade, Yeah, we you? have, uh, for the parade participants, we have a small open house at the VFW headquarters on Everett Street. And uh, right. uh, people can come in and have a little snack and, and drink a soda and whatever and right. cool down. and Yeah. So I want to transition now. We talked a little bit about Memorial Day, but I want to talk a little bit about the veteran agent, right? You're the veteran's agent for Southbridge. And I guess I want to kind of define for people what it means to be the veteran agent and what services do you provide to the men and women who are still living that are veterans in our community? How do we help them? And I know that Massachusetts is just unbelievably good to veterans, more so than any other state in the country. Absolutely. Number one in the country, actually. Mm -hmm. Um, veteran Service Office's responsibility is to aid and assist any veteran, his spouse, or dependent children at a time when, um, if they lose their job, um, they obviously they have to be honorably served veteran and have to have an honorable discharge. But if, if a veteran is down on, down on his luck and times get bad, uh, each town in the state of Massachusetts provides a program called Chapter 115 Veterans Benefits. And that is a supplement plan uh, that will at least put some dollars in the veteran's pocket if he, like I say, if he lost his job or the company, you know, decided to close their doors or whatever. Um, it gives him a chance to have a few dollars till he gets back on his feet, finds another job, gets a full-time employment back in his hands. Um, and, and it's a great program. We pay for the veteran and his spouse and his children's medical expenses if there should be any during that time he's on that program um it, it's just it's just one of a one of a kind and mm -hmm. in massachusetts is the only state in the country that has that program tell me if, if if i'm a veteran and i'm out there in the community and all of a sudden i realize i need help how do i contact you how do i get a hold of you do i got to come and meet you in person do i call you well, what's the process and what's the location of, of where you work at? Okay, of? most most veteran service officers, veterans agents, work out of a town hall generally. Uh, in my particular case, um, my office is located at the Southbridge Community Center at 153 Chestnut Street, mm -hmm. um, which is the former armory. And um, if a person doesn't have my phone number, uh, if they simply call your office, mm -hmm. town hall, I'm sure they, whoever they speak to here will get them in touch with me. We set up a time. They come in. I do an interview. Um, there's some paperwork that has to be filled out, just like any, any other program. Mm -hmm. And um, once the case has been investigated, if all is good, uh, then within a few weeks, he'd receive a check. Now, Mike, we, me and you had talked earlier, and you mentioned that the amount of veterans organizations have actually decreased, right? And Correct. a lot of that is because the... There's a new generation of veterans that are not quite the same as the old-time veterans, right? Um, so we're down to four. And I know even the VFW recently, they sold their building. Correct. And they actually donated a tremendous amount of money to uh, our town. And, and you know, David Adams is working on redoing a room in town hall called our Veterans Conference Room. And it's actually coming along beautifully and stuff. But tell me a little bit about the veterans. If I'm a veteran now, where would I go in Southbridge to talk to another veteran? Or, I mean, do they... Is there really a location anymore? I know the VFW used to provide a place for that. Correct. American Legions do. So so I'm a veteran. I want to connect with other veterans. Is there a place anymore to do it? Well, you, you still have the Polish-American War veterans have uh, a location up on uh, West Main Street, mm -hmm. which is across from Big Bunny Market. Mm -hmm. um, but it's small numbers, so there's not a lot of veterans hanging around there because mm. it's a combination of a veterans organization and a... And a uh, an association membership of what's called Pulzitsky, uh, and, and that's not veterans. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, is there a place? See, this is where we lost the veterans organizations many years ago after World War II. There were many veterans organizations, places for these guys to go and chat, like you mm -hmm. say. Uh, where can one veteran speak to another and talk about their time in the military service? That's dwindled to about mm -hmm. zero. Uh, the last one basically was the uh, post six oh five five VFW, and they sold their facility because it got too hard to pay the bills. Yeah. It's it's sad because the new generation of veterans don't go to those activities. But frankly, that's true with all these civic organizations. Absolutely. They're all kind of fading away. 
people are connected more through the internet than they are a real person anymore. Absolutely. So, so they're not going because right now there's a lot of veterans coming out of you know what's going on in Afghanistan and yeah. Iraq and Syria. I mean. People don't realize just how many veterans are still coming home from those active engagements. I mean, Afghanistan's, Afghanistan's been going on for over 10 years. That's I think correct. closer to 15-something years. Yep. A lot of people have come home from there. Right? Yep. yep. And it, it's true. And the saddest part is when a person gets discharged from military service, I, as veteran service officer for the community, up until about a year ago, never knew when that person got out of the service. Mm -hmm. So there was no way for me to pick up the phone and reach out to that yeah. person and say, do you know what you need to be doing next? Um, now the state of Massachusetts has created a couple avenues where the Boston office, once they learn a person is coming back to the community that I'm working mm -hmm. in, they send me a document indicating that person is getting out Give him a call as soon as you can find out his location, Correct. phone number, see what you can do for him. Mm -hmm. Here we go again. Massachusetts is tops with that. Yeah. Because military, once you're about ready to get out of the military, um, they don't spend a lot of time telling you this is what you need to do next. So yeah. this is what Massachusetts, once again, uh, right on top with that. They, they give them booklets. They uh, give them directions. Yeah, it's better. Yeah, tell me, you know, and I'm not going to ask you much detail. I don't expect you to know that, but but a lot of the problem you see from from veterans is health issues. You know, getting medical services. Yep. Um, is there a VA uh, a veterans hospital nearby that people could the go to? The closest veterans hospital is Northampton, Massachusetts Hospital. Right. We have an outpatient clinic in Worcester, <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, and now in the last couple of years, those that have service connected disability uh, in excess of fifty percent disability. The VA is now, if they can't get a, an exam done on, on a veteran's specific needs within a certain amount of time, they're subcontracting other locations yeah. so that they can get this person mm -hmm. checked out quicker. Well, I know that's a big issue nationwide, nationwide. trying to get people assistance quickly where they're not sitting on some waiting list forever. Correct. And, and it's dangerous, obviously, to your health if you're waiting if for you're something waiting. to happen. Correct. Right? So. But I've been a member of the VA healthcare system since 1969, and um, I've, I've never had a bad experience. I mean, you do hear some bad experiences, as we all saw about a year and a half ago uh, in Congress, uh, where there was a VA out somewhere in Arizona that was failing pretty badly, and uh, it didn't look good for the VA for the whole process, but that's, that's one area. Right. The rest of the VA can't be slammed for one one area of service, yeah. you know. So I guess one of the things we want to do today, we want to make sure, again, the 28th, which is a Monday at 9 o'clock, you'll see the parade starting from the corner of Elm Street and Main Street. We would love you to be there. Again, it, this is, you know, di different memorial parades are different. Some seem more like celebrations in some respects. Correct. But the parade that we do in here in Southbridge is more of a solemn occasion to remember the men and women who've lost their lives as a result of their service to this country. So we want to invite everybody that's watching this show to come down and enjoy the parade. And not only enjoy it for its aspect of walking there, but just the fact that, that citizens are engaged in remembering the men and women. I think that's, that's really what's important here. It's it not important. the It's not the holiday. I mean, we all think, oh, great, it's a day off from work and everything yep. else. But you got to really think about how much this, this, this holiday... Uh, means to the families of people who lost their lives, and and again, a great way to remember those those who, who really gave to this country. Yep. Mike, is there anything you would want to say directly to either family members of veterans that are out there, or family members who've lost people alive, or whatever you'd like to talk about in terms of a message you would give to maybe veterans that are out there watching this show to get involved? He wants you to take a second and kind of introduce, you know, say what you'd like to, to those people well, what, that are watching. What I, what I have done in the last <laughs> week is, is I've tried to itemize, uh, I, as, as coordinate, coordinating this, this, uh, this day of observances, I've been doing it for close to 40 years. Um, what I've tried to do is outline it the best that I possibly can so that people have a direction as to what we're doing on, uh, on May 28th, uh, what time we're going to be where, what have you. Um, I've got a request out there for people <laughs> to assist us with placing the flags. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a request out there for people that may have a little convertible car that may want to carry a few veterans that no longer can walk. Right. So 
I, I've reached out to the community the best that I can and with hopes that people will come out and see what we're trying to get accomplished uh, because of the importance of the day. You know, um, I'm 71 years old and really, I'm considered one of the younger ones in the bunch. Yeah. I've been doing this for almost 49 years. It's amazing. So, and, and I can tell you, Mike, you know, I, I've dealt with you on a number of issues as yep. it relates to both veterans and community services. Mm -hmm. And I want to really thank you for your service to the town, uh, both both as the veteran agent and, and your service to the country, but also just as an employee. I know you're getting closer to the retirement days, Correct. but you've provided great service to this community. I just want you to know how much we appreciate that. Thank you. To the men and women and, and families that are watching this show, we want to encourage you to be there on the 28th. You know, it's an hour to your time. Come on and down, enjoy the parade, share with us in, in those memories. Uh, we want to thank uh, all the veterans that are out there um, that are watching this show and, and who are not watching this show. We appreciate the sacrifices that you're making. If you need help and you're a veteran, please contact Mike Trombley through the community center uh, and through the town, of, you know, the town government here in Southbridge. If you're having a problem, call the town manager's office. We'll get you a number to contact. But if you need help, but you're out there, you're struggling financially, you need help some, with some health care issues, and you've served this country, you deserve that help. And Mike is going to be the guy that kind of gets it for you. So, Mike, again, Absolutely. I want to thank you. Thank and you. I wish you the best. Thank you. And um, I hope that, that we have a whole group of people out to watch the parade. Super. Thank okay. you, everyone. Thanks.